Welcome back to the FPL Duo. We are back for the knee jerk stream for game week 35. Uh, so we'll be looking ahead to game week 35 and also um, discussing this crazy double game week 34 as well so far. Uh, but yeah, how are you doing, Jordan? How's your weekend been so far? Yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster in terms of football. There's been so much, obviously, not just Premier League, but yeah, it is a mad start to double game week 34, especially for Haas. I think there's a lot to talk about for his team on his free hit. Yeah, there's a lot to discuss, guys, um, because obviously I'm on a free hit, as you guys know. Um, and it's been a bit of a up and down sort of game week so far. A lot of positives, few little things where I, I, so far I wish I picked some. I went different in certain ways as well, but I can't complain too much. So as you guys know, I'm on a free hit. Um, and so far I can't complain, really. It's a it's a big green arrow. and um, my target was to get into the top 50k this game week. I've done it. Um, so let's go through with you know how I'm doing so far. Obviously, I've still got essentially 11 players still to play because um, all my players double again. So you know I, I should get 100 points um, if if all goes well. I mean, there were some disappointments, uh, especially with the Liverpool lineup. Obviously, a couple of surprise benchings. But well, let's get into it. So I've got in goal. I've got Pickford now as a Pickford owner. Obviously, I'm very happy that he he got seven points. But you know how Everton won. That I think that was just I I believe Nottingham Forest were robbed. Three clear penalties, uh, not given. But you know, as a Pickford and I won't complain too much. But yeah, I, I thought you know Nottingham Forest very very unlucky not to have at least three penalties today. And obviously, we've seen the outroar on social media with the Nottingham Forest tweet. I don't know if you guys have seen it. The the main like social media account from Nottingham Forest just calling out. Um, VAR for being a Luton fan, which is which is crazy. But yeah, do check that out, guys, on Twitter if you haven't already. So yes, Pickford comes away with a couple of bonus points as well, I believe. He ends up with seven points, and he's got Liverpool at home next. Now, I don't expect Pickford to keep a clean sheet against Liverpool, uh, but you know he, he should get me a couple of points and maybe a double-digit haul after you know, maybe a couple of save points. So yeah, very happy with, with Pickford in goal. Uh, in the back three, I went with uh, the safe option. This is where I sort of regret not going Trent because all week I had Trent in my free hit draft um, instead of Van Dyke. But the reason why I went Van Dyke, well, I wasn't sure that Trent was going to start. Um, and Trent, you know, he did go and start and he scored you know, a fantastic free kick as well. So what a goal from Trent. And that's what he can do. I kind of wish I went and Trent now, but, you know, he might get benched for that second game against Everton. We don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. But Van Dyke obviously conceded. Now, Liverpool were a lot better today. Um, compared to the last few games. I thought Liverpool played really well, especially in that second half. Um, but no clean sheet still. Pretty poor goal to concede. And then, yeah, wiped the clean sheet for Virgil. Coming on to Gabriel, um, Arsenal did play Wolves. Um, Wolves had a few chances, a few scares for Arsenal, but Arsenal ended up, you know, pretty comfortable in the end, um, getting that 2-0 uh, with a late Odegaard goal. Odegaard's another one I was looking at. I'll come on to whether I go Odegaard or Havertz. Uh, ended up going Havertz, but again, there's still another game to come, so we'll have to wait and see. But as of now, Gabriel six pointer. Um, slight regret not going for double Arsenal defense over the attack. I went double attack, um, but I'm hoping like fixture against Chelsea could could pay off. Uh, to, to end the team, Munoz uh, did concede two goals, uh, but it looked like he scored at one point. Um, I thought he was going to get given the goal, but he got given as an own goal. So a bit unlucky there. But um, yeah, Munoz comes with a one-pointer. Newcastle next. I don't expect a clean sheet. I'm just hoping really on an attack in return from him. Uh, moving into the midfield five. This is where it gets a bit interesting as well. So Luis Diaz did start the game. And for those that didn't watch the game, Luis Diaz missed an absolute sitter within the first like 10, 15 minutes of the game. Could have scored it, should have been a bit. He does. Unfortunately, Lewis, big chance he had, uh, comes with off. Hopefully, start Everton with. Uh, Salah is interesting because. Uh, we've, hasn't been we've sort of lost you, Huss, in the communication. Oh, so. Uh, you froze me. It's, it's probably you because you froze on my screen. Oh, have I? You froze oh. for a sec there. Yeah, you you froze for a sec there, but 
I think I'm, I'm freezing as well. But let, let us know, guys, in the chat if if, if you guys can hear us properly still. Um, so yeah, essentially, yeah, Salah. Um, I, I didn't see that coming, guys. The benching from from Mo Salah. Um, I thought he'd. I know he hasn't been great. He was benched against. I'm sorry, he started against Atlanta, didn't he? But he came off. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, he's probably going to start now uh, against um, um, against Fulham. But Salah started on the bench. He came on for the last, I think, like 20 minutes or so. Uh, didn't look great again, Salah, when he came on. He had that one chance sort of... He wasn't going to score from there, but he just fluffed the shot anyway, uh, well wide. But uh, against Everton, I don't know if he's going to start. I, The way Liverpool played without him today, I think the front three was Jota, Gakpo and Diaz. It looked a lot better without... Salah and Nunes today, so maybe Klopp decides to drop him again against Everton. And as a Salah captain, obviously it's not great um, getting the two pointer. Uh, so we'll have to see what he does, uh, Klopp against Everton, because that is on Wednesday now. Uh, Saka was my vice captain. Didn't get an attack in return uh, against um, Wolves. However, um, he's got Chelsea next, and hopefully. Um, Saka can turn it around. I have gone double Arsenal attack with Havertz and Saka. Kind of regret not going Saliba, Gabriel, and then ha having one of the other. But, you know, word of God, Havertz was 50-50 for me. I just went Havertz due to being more of a differential. But it's not paid off so far. But I'm, I'm still quite confident in for that Chelsea game. They may get something. So, yeah, blanks for Saka and Havertz. Uh, the big one is actually Eze. Um, Eze was a lock. I said, you know, very early on during the week, Eze is a must-have on a free hit. Um, and he went and got a, a you know storming performance. Could have had a, could have had another goal. Should have had another goal. Um, missed a, a big chance really as a but as a comes away with um a goal and I believe an assist as well. Uh, plus he got the bonus point. Um, I'm not sure how many bonus points he got, but he ends up on 11 points. And yeah, you know, I mean, fantastic from Eze. Slight regret not going Elise as well. Elise had another. Big game, got a goal, a couple of assists. And whoever went triple Palace attack, it paid off. I was close to going Palace, triple Palace attack. Uh, I did think about going Elise, Eze and Mateta. Whoever went there, you know, you, you must be smashing it right now. But I'm, I'm, I can't complain too much going Eze and Mateta. It still paid off big time. Um, and yeah, Eze, 11-pointer plus Newcastle to come. I'm looking forward to that game now. Anything he gets now is just uh, a, a bonus, really. And uh, I, I still believe Palace can actually cause problems for Newcastle on the counter-attack. So, yeah, Eze, fantastic. Um, let us know, guys, if you, if you went Eze as well, because um, he's not massively owned, but he's a lot of people did bring him in. He's actually the, the most transferred-in player this week, which which is a bit surprising, but maybe not, because we know he had a double and, you know, he's, he's sort of the main man at, at Palace. Then up front, um, it was another you know, sort of positive, really. So let's start off with Solanke. does score a penalty. Um, Solanke was always going to be in my free hit draft. You, you know, we know he's on pens. He's been consistent this season. Uh, and against Villa, um, he, we just knew that he'd probably, if he gets a chance, he'll score. I know it was a penalty, but that's why he's in the team. And Wolves next, uh, you know, he could get double digit points in the in the end. And then finally, I think the main man of the whole game week so far, still a long way to go, but Mateta, I don't think anyone saw this coming. Uh, obviously, I was always going to have Mateta in the draft. I remember one people thinking Mateta or Cunha. I was always siding towards Mateta um, just because I think when I watched him playing against Liverpool, and Liverpool lost last week to Palace, I was impressed with Eze, Mateta and Elise against Liverpool. And then that's why I was just straight away going to have Mateta in the team. Um, and I, but you know, I didn't see this coming in the wildest dreams. You know, this Palace scored four goals within like the first 30 minutes of the, and that's the, I think that's the first time ever in Premier League history where Palace have scored four goals in, in a, in a 45 minute of first half football. So yeah, Mateo, I believe, ended up on two goals and an assist and three bonus points to come away with 16 points. So, um, yeah, just this is what free hit dreams are made of, really. Uh, Mateo 16 point, as a 11 point. I wish I, I didn't consider captaining one of the Palace players, but I know there's a few people that actually went and captained Eze, so that's big. Um, but yeah, look, it's a, it's a, it's been a good week so far. On the bench, obviously, I had a few players, double game weekers, Neto, McBurney, Blank. Mikalenko did get a clean sheet, and Senesi as well. I don't know what, if he started or not, but all in all, um, 
my rank after yesterday was it went down. I was on a red arrow, went down to like 79k. Uh, after the first batch of games, I am now up to 40k rank. Uh, I was, yeah, about a 40k green arrow, I believe, so far, uh, which is nice 60 points, um, plus 11 players left to play. All of them play again. Um, and I expect Salah to start. I'm hoping he does as my captain because uh, if he doesn't start again, which you can't rule it out, the way Liverpool played without Salah and Nunes today, maybe Klopp goes the same way again against Everton. But the only negative really of my team is Salah not starting and maybe I didn't include Elise, who I was considering as well. Other than that, I can't complain. I also didn't want to go Darwin. I know Darwin is a popular pick. I had a feeling Darwin would get benched, and that's why I didn't include him in the draft. Salah, I didn't see that one coming. But other than that, I can't really complain. Trent's the only other one. You know, Trent and Elise, those two I was looking at, and uh, it's 50-50 call, so it's, it's one of those. But, yeah, can't complain. Uh, up to 40k, and then, yeah, I'm looking forward to how the rest of the game week pans out. Um, Over to you, Jordan, as a non-free hitter. <laughs> I mean, as a non, yeah. you not had you not got many doublers in your team as well. I mean, talk us through your week so far. Yeah, it's not been a great week. I did say before the deadline stream, I am hoping for a red arrow. Uh, it just depends on how big it was. But let's start off with the goalkeeper Leno, who just played against Liverpool. So yeah, Liverpool won three one in that game, and obviously Fulham conceded. So no clean sheet for him. Uh, he did make four saves in that game, so he did get a point for making at least three so he ends up on two points but yeah I was, I was kind of expecting that I was hoping Ariola would be fit for that West Ham game thankfully he wasn't because I think that would be much worse because Leno did outscore Ariola in mm. in other words Fabianski so yeah uh two points for Leno uh moving on to the defense and this started to look good on the first night of double game at 34 because Regulon uh got his seven pointer I was quite annoyed, though, because Luton did score in the very last few minutes of that game and it wiped a regular clean sheet away. Uh, he did get an assist, though, so I was quite happy with that and got a bonus too regardless, but it would have been nice for him to get that clean sheet as well and to get that double haul. But, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for just the seven points he returned uh, for me. Uh, moving on to the next defender, Brant Hoyt. He also got a clean sheet against uh, Not the Forest. Very... A uh, controversial one, I would say. Uh, <laughs> the way that game went, it should be there. Well, not the Forest should have had a few penalties in that game, arguably. But Pickford did make a good save uh, against Chris Wood during that fixture. But Brown did get a yellow card. Uh, but other than that, he did get five points and he has Liverpool at home up next to play. Uh, moving on to Gabriel, uh, he also got his. Obviously, clean sheet against Wolves, 2-0 win for them. And, yeah, a nice six-pointer for him. Uh, he's got Chelsea at home next. So, uh, whatever happens now, it's just a bonus, I think, for Gabriel. Uh, moving on to the midfield. So, Gordon plays Crystal Palace away. So, we have to wait and see uh, what he does in that game. So, let's move on to the captain, who is Salah. Uh, which, yeah, this, might, this came at a surprise, I think. Uh, Huss mentioned to me that Salah was rumoured to be benched. It turns out he was. And yeah, quite quite annoying because he only played 16 minutes in that uh, Fulham game. So he ends up on two points with the captaincy. So yeah, a bit frustrating, I think, for those who went with uh, Salah. But he does have Everton away next. So fingers crossed, uh, he does make a starting appearance in that fixture. Uh, but same thing with the other midfielder. Let's move on to Palmer. He plays uh, another game uh, on another day uh, during this week. So the final midfielder to complete the the front uh, the midfield four is Saka. Uh, he only uh, finishes on three points in that game, only getting the clean sheet point yet again. And yeah, no attacking involvement again from Saka. So yeah, a bit underwhelming uh, again for him not to get any uh, sort of attacking returns especially this week when I really needed it most. But I don't think it matters much because his ownership is uh, relatively high as well. Uh, but he does have Chelsea at home next. Uh, so let's move on to the front three. So this gets a bit tricky because obviously Haaland didn't start. He wasn't even in the squad. So oh, but Haaland plays on Thursday though. So you'll have to see if Haaland 
plays because you might not get the auto sub yet unless Haaland is fit to play against Brighton on Thursday. Yeah, because that that was a confusing thing, obviously, because that was the the other competition. So yeah. ignore obviously Doughty coming off the bench because he's currently still on it. But yeah, he does play Brighton uh, during the week. Uh, so obviously Semenyo, he he was benched and only ends up on one point. Only played half an hour or so in the Aston Villa game, but Bournemouth did lose three one, and Semenyo was without an attack and return. But he does have balls away uh, for his second fixture. Uh, on the other hand, his teammate Solanke though does score the penalty uh, in that game and got the only goal for Bournemouth. So he was my transfer in as well. So there's a bit of a, I say, fortune there. Uh, for me and he does have rules away next but uh, other than that though there's there's not really much else to say for my team because bell injured son had a blank this week and doughty was on minus one uh for conceding five goals to brentford so i'm happy how, how many points are you on though because doughty's not actually playing for you at the moment because harland should still play on thursday so are you like on 33 points uh it's still 32 Okay. Yeah, with that, with doubt he's still on the bench. So, yeah, uh, overall, it's not been a great game week for non free hitters. I think the free hitters have won so far, especially Crystal Palace uh, assets. Yep. So, yeah, I'm on I'm on 32 points at the moment. Still got a few double game week players to play, and it is obviously a red arrow. My previous rank, if I can get up quickly, because I haven't checked, my old rank was 62k, and now I've dropped down to 77. So yeah, it is a 25k red arrow for me. I think my <laughs> my ambition for this game week is to stay in the top 100k, I think, and not drop below that now. Uh, so, yeah, we have to wait and see. Hopefully, there's not much damage uh, to be done for the rest of the double game week. Yeah, obviously, 34 is still not over. There's still a lot of fixtures to play. Um, I think it could get even more rewarding if you've still got a lot more double game week players left, you know. The Liverpool guys, I think, were a bit unfortunate. Diaz, um, Salah, Nunes being benched is big because a lot of Liverpool players were on free hits. And Palace was the one that really shocked everyone, I think. I mean, we we all included Palace players in the team, but they went a lot more bigger than maybe a lot of us thought. But yeah, so far, you know, that's how our game week 34 has gone so far, guys. Um, also, do want to add, if you are you know in the, in the in the stream, make sure you are hitting that like button if you are enjoying the content. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well if you're new around here. Um, yeah, so let's pull up our teams for Game Week 35 so far. I mean, we'll come back to Game Week 34, but we're going to look ahead to Game Week 35 as well, bus teams, because um, there is a quite a bit to discuss. Just give me a sec, guys, while I pull up my team. Just let me put it in screen. So this is what my team currently looks like for Gaming 35. There is some news that came out late last night, um, which does affect my team, uh, unfortunately. And that is the news that Udogi has actually been ruled out for the rest of the season. Uh, I don't know what the exact injury is, but it is a massive blow for Spurs. A massive blow for a lot of our FPL teams that do have Udogi. Um, and Udogi had a double game week this week. So... I'm losing a doubler for game week 35. And we know Pedro Porro is still flagged. So again, that's another another, another negative really for going for Spurs. I did want another Spurs player because I've only got one at the moment, at this moment in time. So I'll just go through my bus team for game week 35 so far. So in goal, I've got Petrovic with a double, a back three with Gusto, double, Gabriel and Dan Byrne. I've got midfield five of Son, Saka, Salah, Garnacho, and Palmer, with Son and Palmer both doubling. Palmer is out and out captain for me this week. I'm not even going to debate it or more and think about it. I think Palmer is the best choice. It's boring probably, but I think if you've got Palmer, guys, I think you everyone's going to captain him. And up front, I've got Haaland and Isaac. I do want to see what Haaland does against Brighton on Thursday if he does start. I think he will. And then Isaac's got a nice fixture against Sheffield. On the bench, I've got Kelleher, Hoyland, Udogi, who now is out for the season, and Van Heck. Um, I could play Hoyland, who's got Burnley at home. I'm just not convinced with Man United. I thought, I mean, the way they won today was pretty. I mean, I don't know. It, was, it looked it could get it could have got embarrassing. 
um, the way they sort of well, went three 0 up and then sort of, you know, sort of let it slip and then won on penalties. So I'm not sure if I'd want to start Hoyland. I think Garnacho is fine for now. Um, but yeah, the main issue with my team right now is that Udogi injury. So what I'm thinking of right now is Udogi out for Poro, or if Poro is not fit for anyone else, whether that's Emerson Royale or Ben Davies, whoever Spurs has got a fullback, I do want another Spurs defender. Um, so it will be another Spurs defender coming in for Udogi. My plan was to actually roll my transfer and play Udogi instead of at Gabriel. I was going to bench Gabriel this week, play Udogi and burn, and then have um, essentially five doublers with the Chelsea triple up and then Spurs double with Udogi and Son. So that's what it's looking like, guys, as my bus team. Jordan, if you're saying for you, what's your current bus team looking like and early transfer thoughts as well? Okay, yeah, so this is what my... Uh, game week 35 team looks like so far. So Leno in goal. Uh, I think Oberio, that's an easy pick. Back three, you got Regulon, Brantfreight and Gabriel. Hopefully Brantfreight's fine. He was a bit iffy in the double game week 34 fixture. But it should be okay. Uh, I've gone with the midfield five of Gordon, Salah, Palmer, Saka, Son. And obviously, yeah, Palmer. No, no, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, he's the outstanding captain for this week. Um, there's no other contention with that. And uh, up front, we've got Haaland and Solanke uh, as the front two forwards. Uh, on the bench, there's less flags to be seen. So we've got, obviously, Ariola, Doughty, Semenyo, and Bell. So Bell is the only red flag I have currently, but it's nice to see them disappear. Uh, in terms of transfers, plans, I'm a bit stuck on, who, on, on the transfer plans. Obviously, I've got no money in the bank which mm -hmm. that leaves a bit of a headache because I can't really get anyone more expensive than Solanke at 7.2 million. So, yeah, I'm kind of stuck on who to bring in. Who do you think... If this, if this was your team, Huss, who do you think you should uh, bring into your team if you're uh, looking to use a free transfer? That's the thing. It depends how brave you want to go. Um, we know there's a double game week this week. So you could potentially bring in another doubler. Um, I know we'll look, you've looked at Isaac. Isaac is a single game week player. Um, but I don't know. I, I might want to bring in another doubler because obviously I just like bringing in as many in my team as, as possible. As you guys know, I, I do like bringing in double game week players. So that's where I'd probably go um, and, and maybe do that. But it's tough to say because your team looks okay in, ter in terms of single game week fixtures. Then again, I, I'm actually... I don't know what your thoughts are, but I'm looking at selling Salah and Saka soon. Both of them uh, out of my team uh, in the next week or two. So those I am looking at moving them on. I don't know who yeah. for who at the moment. Um, could be for a Spurs player, could be for a Man United player. I mean, after today, I don't know how many Man United players I'd want in my team, but <laughs> they have future double coming up in 37. So, yeah, but it's it's. I know it really depends whether you want another double up from Spurs. Would you want to get a Spurs defender in? You probably don't see many clean sheets. I don't see a clean sheet no. for Spurs in the double list. Whether you think if you want to bring a Poro in or maybe another another Chelsea player, possibly. Um, yeah, I'll, if I switch to my other screen, my transfer page. This is one that I was probably considering uh, bringing into my team, but I'm not too sure on it because... Yeah, I wasn't really keen on his performances against Man City. But my, my initial plan was to take out Solanke after bringing him in. But he plays a hard fixture in game at 35. And bringing in, obviously, Nicholas Jackson for Chelsea, which gives me another double. But whether I want to bring in Nicholas Jackson or not, he's probably mm -hmm. one of the most frustrating assets I've probably seen other than Darwin. But again, Darwin's turned it around for Liverpool. But Nicholas Jackson this season has been... I don't know what I don't know what's what's wrong obviously with him as a forward, but yeah, I I could do that as an option. Mm. He is six point eight million, which saves me a bit of money in the bank, and he doubles as well alongside Palmer. So yeah, that's probably where I'm looking at at the moment. But I don't know whether that will pay off or not. Yeah, I mean, you could go there. You could also maybe bring in a defender. It depends. The upside, probably more upside, would go in for an attacking player like a Jackson. Um, because they do have a, a double. 
Um, so yeah, that, that could be a decent move. Um, but yeah, guys, let us know how your game weeks have gone in the chat. Let's get a few comments. Uh, so Patrick, hi lads, best minus four in my life. Kaminsky, Foden, Morris, Raya, Eze and Mateta. And Eze captain as well. 48 points oh. from three players and a 71 points game week so far. Yeah, that's a fantastic nice. score. So yeah, sometimes minus fours obviously can pay off. I mean, that's definitely one of the examples where you, you sort of smashed it. Uh, tricky Trees, uh, back on track thanks to Triple Palace attack. 73 points was with 12 players to go. Yeah, I wish I went Triple Palace. I, went, I was looking at Elise, um, but the reason why I didn't want to go all in, um, I mean, I didn't see Palace score five against West Ham, but I had a feeling that they could do decent. A Chief says, nice rank, Huss. Thank, thank you, Chief. Uh, evening all, 47 points with 15 players to go on bench boost. Hope Haaland starts, says Vitality. Um, Elika, 44 points. Wanted to do Anderson instead of Munoz. I went with Munoz last minute. Yeah, wow. I think a lot of people went Munoz or Tarek Mitchell, and no one really looked at Anderson, but he's the one that got the assist today. Yeah, I, th I think Mitchell as well. Did he not? Did he get an own goal? goal yeah, well? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the annoying thing for those who bought Mitchell too. Yeah, Anderson's a good pick. Um, obviously, on a free hit, he's slightly more expensive, but on a free hit, I guess we had a lot of money to, to spend anyway. Uh, triple captain Salah is not looking good. Is he even going to start against Everton? Yeah, this is the one. This is the big one. If you went triple captain Salah, then yeah, definitely feel for yeah. you guys. I went triple captain. Obviously, not starting. I personally wouldn't be confident of a Salah triple captain this game week. Um, just because I just don't think he's been at his best in the last couple of games. But is he going to start against Everton? Again, I, I have no idea. He actually has a very good record against Everton, I, I believe. Also got a decent record against Everton, so I'll be surprised if he gets back-to-back -back benchings in Premier League games. Uh, I, I just think he might start. Whether he should start or not is another question, because uh, Diaz on the right was pretty decent for Liverpool today. Um, and then Gakpo looked a lot better on the left side uh, with, with Jota. And the, the difference Jota makes, you know, you, you see, you just need that one chance. If Jota wasn't great today, but one chance, just a goal. Uh, just super clinical uh, for Liverpool, and he's been a massive loss uh, in that attack. Uh, which third player to get have Palmer Gusto? Uh, um, probably Jackson, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's no other Chelsea player, honestly, I would look at apart from those three. Mm. The, re the rest of them just don't they don't um, persuade me. Mm, yeah, probably Jackson. I'm afraid the doggy price fall might have a, might play a huge factor. Should we wait or take out now? Um. It depends. I'm probably going to take him out. I don't know who for who yet. I just want to see what other Spurs defenders I can bring in because Pedro Porro would be the one I'd get in if I knew Pedro Porro's fit. I would do it. I'd bring Pedro Porro in. But again, I'm not sure what, what his situation is with his fitness. Robert Crook Crooks says, I'm playing Jordan in the Cup this week. Um, oh, good luck, Robert, then. <laughs> extra games if you get a Chelsea player. 58 points on free hit and a green arrow from 62k to 42k so far. Delighted to Dara. And Henderson got the own goal. Yeah, my bad. Um, Henderson oh. did get the own goal in the end. Oh, it, it must have changed then. Cause yeah, I, I thought, I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's a relief then for Mitchell owners. Yeah, I, I also saw it pop up with like a Mitchell own goal, but then I think they changed yeah. it to Henderson. He ended up getting it. Um, but yeah, guys, let us know how you guys did in, as well in the chat. Uh, make sure you are hitting the like button on the stream as well, as always, and do subscribe to the channel. In terms of like, Game week 35, though, um, we know Spurs and, and Chelsea are the, t are the two teams that double. Um, I mean, are you set on Palmer? Are you even going to consider Son at all? Or I mean, I'm set on Palmer for captain. What, what about yourself? Oh, yeah, Palmer all the way. I mean, I don't think there's really much argument you can make in choosing mm. Son as the way Spurs have played. Mm. You saw last game week where Son was taken off in the second half and barely played any minutes in that game just because of Spurs' poor performance. So, yeah, even with Chelsea, even the rest, of, even though the rest of their team can be really poor, Palmer seems to find a way to save them. And, yeah, it is from penalties a lot of the time, but he is scoring the penalties, and it does take some clinical form to obviously take a penalty and get it behind the net because I don't think Palmer's missed one so far for mm. Chelsea. So, yeah, for me, he's my captain without a doubt. Yeah, I think Palmer will be... I think Palmer triple captain, if you've still got it, I think Palmer triple captain could be really nice. Um, 
I think his fixtures are pretty... I think the two fixtures, yeah, they're quite tough on paper, but Villa away could be tough. But Tottenham at home, I could see that being a high-scoring game. Um, so I wouldn't mind Palmer as a triple captain option. Um, Son, I think, is, is a clear vice. Uh, in terms of the other players, I want to get your thoughts on uh, Salah and Saka as well, because obviously I'm looking at these two players right now thinking, do we need them right now? Um, because I think... S- Saka has one goal in his last. Saka has one goal in his last eight Premier League games. Did you know that? No, it didn't feel like he did only have one goal in his yeah. last eight Premier League games. It felt like he's, well, he's had literally had more than he, that. He's got one attacking return in his last seven games. One goal in his last seven, no assists. In his last eight, he's looking at one goals, two assists. So three attacking returns in his last eight games. And two of those were against a 6-0 win against Sheffield. So I am actually looking at taking Saka out myself. I don't know about yourself. But again, that Bournemouth fixture is looking quite nice in 36. What's your view on it, Saka, longer term? Is he a season holder for you now? Yeah, he probably is a season holder for me. I think if I take him out now and, Mm -hmm. I don't know, he manages to get like a double haul in one of those fixtures. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him to do it against Chelsea. Or any of those ones on the paper uh, mm. screen right now. I mean, Spurs, that one could be a bit iffy for them, even though it's a yeah. London derby. But yeah, I, it's his ownership, really, that Saka's uh, theories, I think, because a lot of us do own him. Mm. And I think if we take him out now and he goes on to maybe score, get assists for the rest of the season, that's going to vastly affect the, the ranks a bit. Yeah, I'm actually looking at taking him out. We know he's not got any more doubles left. I'll probably keep him for th- uh, 35 against Spurs. Bournemouth mm. is the one where he could go big if I sell him before that. Bournemouth at home is a nice, decent fixture for him. But I th- I think Arsenal's running is quite tough. Chelsea, Spurs, Bournemouth, United, Everton. I don't think that's easy. So I'm actually looking at potentially getting rid of Saka completely. Salah's another one I'm looking at getting rid of, possibly. We know he, after this double, he's not got any more doubles left. It's just West Ham. Spurs, Villa, Wolves. I don't see me captaining him in any of these game weeks either. So Sal- Salah and Saka are both on the chopping block for my team. Um, I want to go a bit different as well with the end of the season. Garnacho, I'd probably just keep him just because of that double l- later down the line. Just not convinced with Man United. But, you know, they're a weird team. We can't really put yeah. a finger on when they're going to score goals or when they're going to turn up. So then that double against Arsenal and Newcastle, who knows, it's two home games. So don't want to sell him before that because I'm going to bench boost in 37 as well. And also, um, I want to get like my team sort of ready for that week. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking at Garnet, uh, sorry, Saka and Salah out my team um, because I'm also looking at Gordon. I want to start bringing Gordon in. Gordon has a nice fixture against Sheffield, whereas Saka and Salah, I'm not been convinced with those two and the fixtures as well. I'm not, I'm not keen on so. I'll probably remove those and hopefully that can get me... I mean, obviously, it's risky going without Saka especially because I don't think... I think many people are going to hold on to him for the end of the season. So that's not 100% on it, but I am looking at it. Um, what about yourself in terms of your team? Is I mean, are you, is, is it looks like it's going to be Jackson because, I mean, Solanke's yeah. got a decent fixture. Yeah, I mean, Solanke has a, a decent fixture against, um, against Brighton at home, um, obviously, but... I don't know. I think ever since I took, ever since I bought something, it hasn't paid off for me. He hasn't given yeah. me one return, and I was desperate to bring him in because I was in fear that he would uh, cause my rank to down, down spiral. But it turns out it hasn't really worked out at all that plan. Um, yeah, and that's that's obviously cost me a lot of money because now I can't really get anyone else apart from Nicholas Jackson uh, in replace for Solanke. So mm. yeah, I mean because Son has two doubles. I think if he didn't, then I probably would take him out and bring in someone else instead yeah. to to lower the funds. But yeah, I'm kind of in the pickle with that because it hasn't really hasn't really planned out what I wanted to do with my team. But uh, I just have to ro- roll with it now and see if it can turn around for me. Yeah, you can't take Son out before two no. doubles, basically. Yeah, even though he's not been great in the last couple of weeks either, and Spurs haven't been playing well that well either. You know, just, you know, came off a. A big loss to Newcastle was it five one? 
Yeah, that was a shocking result. Never saw that coming, to be honest. And yeah, I'm just hoping Saka and Salah can find their form and also Son mm. as well, because they are I'm pretty much reliant on those three. Yeah. Uh, to do well which game we can everyone else around my team in addition to even yeah. like Regulon, he's been great for me so far for Yeah, Regulon's been a good move so far for those that went Regulon. Yeah. Um but it looks it, sorry, you were saying? But yeah, it's just the uh, players around the team that obviously ten play. I need to do well. I need them to do well as well, as well as the mm-hmm. ones that are low owned too. Yeah, I, I want to go different in the last couple of weeks, and that's why I'm looking at maybe taking out Salah or Saka. I am 38 points behind top 10k, so it's still a it's going to be a tall order for me to get into top 10k. Um, yeah, but you never know. It's, it's, it could be possible, but it's going to take a bit of luck as, and some good decision making, but. Uh, yeah we'll see yeah i think for me top 10k is um has suddenly shrunk for me i think this game week has been a pounding for non-free hitters and i wasn't yeah. expecting it but that crystal palace game i think that what that's what's done it i wasn't expecting the crystal palace to score that many goals mm. against west ham and i feel like if they didn't then i might have been safe uh, around my red arrow yeah, it could get worse for you. Yeah, you know, it could get worse. There's, yeah. there's still eleven. A lot of P three here. Still eleven left. I mean, you could find yourself maybe out. I don't know how how far away from the hundred k. If it if Palace go big again against Newcastle, oh, and we know yeah. Newcastle defense away from home. Yeah, I'll definitely drop below hundred k if they do well again. The assets, especially at least Mateta and Eze, that's the main three. Yeah, I don't know what the ownerships are, Elise's, and Mate- I know Mateta's is up there, and Eze was the most transferred in player this week as well. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's one of those. I think, I mean, yeah, the free hit definitely this week. Free hit twenty nine v free hit thirty four. Yeah. I mean, game week twenty nine, a lot of managers free hit in twenty nine, and I just think, you know, thirty four is one hands down really. When you look at yeah. just the three Palace players have outscored most 29 teams combined yeah because in 29 we only had only two really and that was chris wood and Meniz. yeah that really got the high scoring points in that game week but because yeah. of the amount of out red red flags and yellow flags I had in my team i was mm. literally no choice but when did you free hit by the way was it 29 yeah it was 29 it's when i had literally about eight flags in my team yeah with blank game week players as well combined and yeah, I was in no position to take a hit because it would have been in the in the mi- minus twenty four uh, mm. <laughs> area. Dara went for Odegaard on a free hit. Hopefully, hopefully he does well. I mean, he's already scored first game, um, so his second game left. I think he got a double digit return in the end as well. So yeah, I mean, Odegaard Havertz was fifty fifty for me, but I went Havertz just because I thought he's going to be more low owned than Odegaard, but. Maybe I should have went Odegaard because hindsight, I don't know. But Odegaard is normally involved in Arsenal's goals. So, yeah, good pick. Uh, Soul Search are looking peak without the Palace boys, lads. Yeah, if you didn't have Palace, then, you know, you would be struggling because they were the main killers, really, this game week, especially, you know, Eze, Elise, Mateta, uh, and Trent Tino masterclass says Soul Searcher as well. Yeah, obviously, Trent, what a goal. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's just, I mean, 35, I think it's just another week where we're getting ready for the doubles. Uh, season's coming to the end now, sort of. Um, still a lot to play for, so I don't think there'll be that much rotation, especially for the top teams like Liverpool won today. Uh, I know it's, it's maybe unlikely Liverpool win the league now, but you know, level on points with Arsenal. Man City got to go to Brighton on Thursday, but before Man City go, you know, Liverpool and Arsenal will have already played another game. So they could find themselves, you know, four points clear of Man City before Man City have to play Brighton. And that's all they could do. You know, put a bit of pressure on and hope Man City slip up. But, you know, I, you know, this is good, I guess, for FPL. You know, it's going to go to the wire. So most teams won't yeah. be able to drop players and rotate. But, yeah, we'll have to see um, how that goes for the end of 34. But, yeah, 35 is one of those weeks. I think it's going to be setting up your team for, for, for the double if you've not got any if you've not got Palmer which I don't know if many managers out there yet you know bring Palmer in Son you know your doggy injuries muddied my team a bit but I will be looking to bring in another Spurs defender whoever that is 
Uh, have you not looked at like bringing in a single game player? Maybe like um, one that has a good fixture. Maybe going double Newcastle defense. Maybe bringing Shar in. I've looked at that. I, I, I'm actually not ruled out, but it's because Newcastle do double again in 37. I've looked at Trippier in. Uh, I think Trippier could come into my team soon. We know he's back and he's playing okay. Uh, but yeah, Tri I've looked at Trippier. Um, I could actually do you dog it to Trippier and then play. I don't know if I'd play Trippier. Sorry, I'd probably play Trippier bench Dan Byrne. But yeah, I've looked at Trippier and going double Newcastle defence because in 37, when they double, I'd bench boost as well. Um, so yeah, I've looked at Trippier. I've looked at another new Tottenham defender, even though I'm not convinced with Tottenham uh, because um, yeah. they. I don't think Tottenham will keep a clean sheet in their double against Arsenal on Chelsea. So he is just relying on the attacking threat, which I don't know if it's worth it. Uh, the other yeah. thing I want to ask you as well is, um, have you thought about like, um, for what players I was, was going to say now? So for my team, I'm looking at yeah. Gordon. Gordon's one I'm looking yeah. at to bring in. And I'm I'm not against taking out Saka and Salah all the way down to Gordon, personally. Yeah, that could be uh, a good move. I'm a Gordon owner. He did get a nice 17 point in the last game week mm. uh, for the goal and the assist. And I think him and Isaac combined, especially for the Sheffield United home fixture, that would be pretty good, I think, for game week 35. Yeah. I was going to have Gordon in my team instead of Garnacho in game week 31 wildcard, but I went Garnacho just because of the money. I, I couldn't afford to go Gordon. That, but Garnacho did sort of pay off because I remember I got a big like, 14, 15 pointer from Garnacho anyway that same week. When yeah. Garnacho scored two goals against Chelsea. So Garnacho's done all okay for me so far. Um, but going forward, I think I do want Gordon. I want. But I just, the thing is, if I get Gordon in, obviously that locks me out of getting Trippier because I love Triple Newcastle. So I, d I doubt I'll go to Trippier um, because of the way my team's set up. Uh, even Jackson, I can't go go anymore because I've got a top, I've got a Chelsea goalkeeper. I've got Chelsea double up defense, which I'm not keen on. Chelsea, I don't expect Chelsea to keep too many clean sheets. Um, what about someone like Madison? Could you consider Madison? Yeah, the double not been great. But either double no. chasing upside, low owned. Yeah, it's just I'm not not been very really convinced with Spurs assets, uh, mm. especially since Madison's come out from injury. He hasn't really been himself as well yeah and it's uncertain what they're going to do in that double game week against Arsenal and Chelsea because they are two difficult teams uh, to face and the way they played last game against Newcastle it hasn't filled with much confidence with uh, bringing doubles in for them yeah hi lads what about double Chelsea attacker for 35 yeah I think that's fine Palmer Jackson well, he's a good I mean it looks looks okay double you know part we know um Jackson's a frustrating player to own. Um, he does miss chances, but you just got to hope he goes in. Really, <laughs> uh, when when he's when yeah. he's playing, he's just one of those. And he... but yeah, he got two fixtures, so you, you'd hope he'd outscore a Haaland against just against Forest. But Isaac's also a single game week fixture, but Isaac's got a good fixture this week, and you know he's on form. The only thing with Isaac is obviously Wilson. Wilson looks like he's back. So, is is he going to take a bit of minutes off Isaac? I mean, I don't think he will, but that's always there in case because you know Wilson does play games when he's fit. Uh, Soul Search are all the long term planned players for this double flopped Saka, Salah, Darwin, but the form players looking good. Might need to do the same team for an on form players for thirty seven. Can't depend on the template. You know, a lot of Saka, Salah are like the locks. Everyone said those are the two you must have for this done. And obviously, they've not worked so far. However, it's still only half time. You know, Salah could easily go and score a goal against Everton, get a penalty, three bonus points, and, and change it around. Same with Saka. He can go and score in, in against against Chelsea. Um, so it's still early days. Because I remember um, one of the other game weeks, the first half of the game week flopped, and then second half sort of changed it around. So um, you know, it could be the other way for Palace. Palace players could go score and, and, get, and, and lose to Newcastle, and then Liverpool and Spurs could do really well so you know we don't know I mean Darwin and Salah should start now for the Wednesday game against Everton you'd think but we, we don't know uh, Soul Searcher also says Johnson and Madison 
Uh, sorry, Johnson over Madison, uh, Brennan Johnson. So, yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah, very interesting. I think Madison's a bit of a, a differential, I suppose, because not many people will maybe not consider him as low as a pick. Yeah, I, I still prefer Madison due to minutes. I don't know how many minutes Johnson's going to get in the in both the games because, you know, Werner's there. Uh, they've got Kulisevsky. They've got Richarlison's now there. Ston. So, it's how the minutes, similar to like Liverpool with, with their five attackers. I think Madison's a bit more nailed. Um, but yeah, man, that's pretty much game week 35 discussed. We're, we're back again, obviously. We're going to sh- start streaming more. Uh, we're going to stream another stream on Thursday talking about team selection, um, tra- transfer plans. I mean, could, could you roll at all or going back to your team? Have you considered um, rolling? I've thought it? about, yeah, I've thought about rolling the transfer. Uh, just to get two more players in for uh, game week 36. But, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that, that's a possibility I could do because I've really got the main one, Son and Palmer, so there's not really anyone else in particular that I would probably go for in between those teams. Because Spurs, I don't see a clean sheet, and I'd be surprised if they finish on a, a nice number, even though they play two fixtures. And Chelsea, there's only... Palmer really and mm. Nicholas Jackson and even Nicholas Jackson, even though he gets the chances. I don't know if, if people watched that Man City and Chelsea semi final, but I think in that game Nicholas Jackson could have scored three goals easily during that game. So he does get the the opportunities to score. It's just his finishing which lets him down a bit. So yeah, it's gonna be split whether I roll or possibly use a transfer uh, to take Solanke out and bring Jackson in. But yeah, that you have to find out and see on the on the deadline stream what I do with that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. Um, but yeah, guys, I think that's everything from us. If you've got any more questions, drop it in the comments below. Uh, as always, make sure you are hitting that like button as well on the video. Get the likes up, guys. It just helps support the channel a lot. Um, and I think we're going to wrap it up here pretty much. Unless you want to discuss anything else uh, I think that pretty much covers all FPL that's happened really in obviously double game at 34 and there's been other football and obviously in other competitions but yeah it's been a bit of a roller coaster I think <laughs> especially for main yeah, yeah. fans but yeah I think that, that's pretty much it I think yeah that, that was a mad the FA Cup game I, I still can't <laughs> believe that but yeah, it should be a good final anyway yeah, uh, but yeah uh, Soul Searcher as well says cheers boys yeah cheers to everyone yeah thank you guys for watching the stream uh, make sure you hit the like uh, we're back on Thursday for team selection we'll also discuss transfers as well as always we're going to go to sh- three streams a week now um, so we're going to look at Thursday th- Saturday and Sunday streams as well um, and we're back for deadline stream as normal on a Saturday um, but yeah guys hopefully you enjoyed your weekend of football a lot of interesting games Looking forward to game week, you know, 35, but also the conclusion of this midweek football this week. So it should be a good one to watch. And yeah, that's it from from us. Um, Hope everyone had a good weekend. And um, yeah, take care, guys. And uh, catch you guys soon. Yeah, take care, guys. Have enjoyed the rest of your weekend and see you soon.